If you're living with any form of diabetes, you may have been recommended to eat a low carbohydrate diet like a paleo diet or an Atkins diet or a keto diet. Unfortunately, you wouldn't be alone in receiving this recommendation because millions of people have been mistakenly prescribed a low carbohydrate diet in an attempt to lose weight, improve their cardiovascular health and lower their blood glucose. Here's the problem. It's not a good idea because even though it's gonna result in suppressing your blood glucose and suppressing your A1C in the short term, it can actually increase your chronic disease risk in the long term. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. The misconceptions that may have led to the common recommendation to eat a ketogenic diet are all over social media right now. And they're telling you that carbohydrates are your enemy and that saturated fat is your friend. I'm here to tell you that that is not a true statement. Let's get right into it. Now, specifically when it comes to blood sugar control or blood glucose control, most people believe that eating carbs is what's gonna make them diabetic or eating sugar is gonna make them diabetic. And the truth is that eating anything that's refined like cookies, crackers, chips, pastas, breads, and sodas, these are all foods that are gonna increase your chronic disease risk and certainly increase your blood glucose and lead you towards more chronic disease. I'm not arguing that. The point here is that when you avoid eating carbohydrate rich foods, if you also avoid eating whole carbohydrate rich foods, you might actually be doing yourself a disservice. And these include foods like fruits and starchy vegetables and legumes and whole grains. These foods are actually incredibly nutrient dense and foods that you should be increasing, not decreasing. And the reason is simple. These foods are rich in vitamins and minerals and fiber and water and antioxidants and phytochemicals. And these are all very important micronutrients that have very specific disease fighting capacity. Now, all of these compounds are good for you. And a lot of them are actually associated with lower risk of both prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So it doesn't really make sense to cut out all carbohydrates because if you do, then you're going to be missing those that actually have very healthful properties. Now, here's what most people do. They try and avoid eating all carbohydrate rich foods. And in substitution for that, they eat more foods that are higher in fat. And if we're really going to get super nerdy about it, let's get down to brass tack. Now, carbohydrates contain four calories per gram and fat contains nine calories per gram, which is slightly more than double. That means that when you eat fat rich foods, because you're trying to eat a low carbohydrate diet, because you're trying to avoid carbohydrate rich foods, your digestive system actually distends a little bit less because you have to eat less food in order to take on the same number of calories. On the contrary, when you eat foods that are rich in fiber that generally contain more carbohydrate energy, the fiber and water, otherwise known as bulk, distends your digestive system and that sends a signal up into your brain. It's a neurological signal from your digestive system that says, hey, I'm full, slow down. Now in your digestive system, bulk stretches the walls of your stomach and your small intestine and your large intestine and that sends these neurological signals up to your brain relatively quickly. This happens also with fat rich foods, but it happens a little bit slower. And it also definitely happens a lot less slower when you're consuming foods that are high in refined oils because oils have a very small volume and they don't distend your digestive system in the same way that foods that contain bulk do. So that's one of the reasons that when you eat foods that are higher in fat, you can actually take on more calories without even knowing it simply because there's less distension inside of your digestive system. Now, here's where things get just a little bit confusing because you've probably read on the internet or maybe you've experienced it yourself. You eat a low carb carbohydrate diet or a ketogenic diet in particular, and you get all these amazing health benefits. You see weight loss, especially rapid weight loss. You see lower triglyceride values. You see a lower A1C value. You see lower fasting blood glucose and your blood pressure might also drop itself. So you might think to yourself, well, I started eating this ketogenic diet and all these things came along for the improvement. So why would you tell me that eating a ketogenic diet is not good for me, Cyrus? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. The reason is because these short-term results can be deceptive and they can be a ticking time bomb in the long term because the research shows that when you eat foods that are high in fat and is high in protein, especially from the animal world, that the short-term results are much less important than the long-term results. And the long-term results can actually lead you to more chronic disease risk. Now, the ketogenic diet was originally developed in the late 1920s as a treatment to reduce the frequency of seizures in children suffering from a condition called intractable epilepsy. Now, at the time, researchers thought that they could induce ketosis as well as a condition known as metabolic acidosis, both of which were known to have anticonvulsant effects and calm neurological activity in the brain. Researchers also noticed was that a ketogenic diet often stimulated rapid weight loss 
and that flatlined their blood glucose and it lowered their triglyceride values and reduced their blood pressure as convenient side effects. So researchers and medical professionals began experimenting with a ketogenic diet and expanding it to a larger chronic disease population so that they could see if this dietary approach worked for people living with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes or obesity or fatty liver disease or Alzheimer's disease or chronic kidney disease or even cancer. And if you look at just some of the specific factors, a ketogenic diet actually does make significant improvements. As an example, in 2006, researchers at the University of Kuwait studied the effect of a ketogenic diet on 66 obese subjects and observed significant weight loss, reduced total cholesterol, reduced LDL cholesterol, reduced triglycerides, and reduced blood glucose. Those are all good things. The same research group admitted 64 obese individuals with and without high blood glucose into a study lasting 13 months to determine the effect of a ketogenic diet on body weight, blood glucose, and cholesterol levels. In that time frame, the participants on average lost 50 to 66 pounds and significantly in drop their total cholesterol, their LDL cholesterol, their triglycerides, their blood glucose, and their HDL cholesterol went up. All of those are good things. But based on the short-term evidence, a ketogenic diet, you can think of it as a very effective tool at promoting short-term improvements in both body weight, blood glucose, A1C, and triglyceride levels. But in the long term, there's a completely different story. The reason that we warn people against eating a ketogenic diet is the fact that long-term, they can become incredibly risky. Large-scale studies performed over long periods of time, I'm talking five years or more in the evidence-based literature consistently demonstrate that low carbohydrate diets worsen long-term health, increase the risk for many chronic diseases, increase the risk for infectious diseases, and increase all-cause mortality, otherwise known as premature death. There are actually no long-term studies on the effect of a truly ketogenic diet in large numbers of people greater than approximately 10,000 people over long periods of time, which is considered five to 20 years. Now by itself, this is concerning to say the least. And some researchers believe that this is because the ketogenic diet is actually pretty challenging to maintain over the course of time. But if you look at a carefully controlled meta-analysis of 17 observational studies of more than 270,000 people conducted in eat those eating a low carbohydrate diet, they found that low carbohydrate diets actually increase mortality risk. These authors indicated that a systematic review and meta-analysis of worldwide reports suggests that a low carbohydrate diet is associated with a significantly higher risk of all-cause mortality in the long run. The authors further stated that these findings support the hypothesis that the short-term benefits of a low-carbohydrate diets for weight loss are potentially irrelevant. Researchers reason that this happened because low-carbohydrate diets result in less fruit intake and less fiber intake and less micronutrient intake, and that might coincide with an increased risk for an increased intake of protein from animal sources, cholesterol, and saturated fat. Some combination of these factors is likely what contributes to an increase in cardiovascular disease risk and all-cause mortality observed in these low-carbohydrate eaters. Now, another thing that we wanna talk about here is the consumption of meat, because most meat ranges from class one to class 2A carcinogens as classified by the World Health Organization. And class one carcinogens are foods that are known that have been proven by science to cause cancer. And class two A carcinogens are foods that are suspected or thought to be causational in the development of cancer. Some researchers have analyzed how replacing 3% of energy from animal protein with plant protein affected the participants' risk for death from cardiovascular disease or any other cause. And what they found was fascinating. Replacing every single type of animal protein with plant protein was associated with a reduced risk of death from cardiovascular disease and cancer. And this was true regardless of whether the animal protein came from processed red meat, unprocessed red meat, poultry, fish, egg, or dairy. In fact, it doesn't even matter what type of animal protein is in question. Replacing 3% of those calories with plant protein was associated with reduced risk of premature death. And that's obviously a very good thing. Researchers also found that for those who are already living with diabetes, eating more animal protein raised the risk of all-cause mortality, whereas eating more plant protein reduced the risk of all-cause cause mortality. And this is what's incredibly important to understand. Most mainstream diabetes recommendations encourage people to eat more animal protein as a means of losing weight and quote unquote stabilizing blood glucose. But large scale evidence shows the exact opposite. So let's be clear, eating more animal protein is associated with an increased risk of early death and health problems, especially in people living with diabetes. So listen, we get it. These fad diets are tempting to try and they're full of all sorts of tantalizing foods that you see on social media and beyond. Heck, they even show some positive short-term results that can be very 
encouraging in the short term. But no matter how hard you look for long-term evidence to support a diet, including more animal protein, more saturated fat, and fewer carbohydrates, you simply won't find it demonstrating that there's long-term benefit. And the reason is because carbohydrate restriction is associated with an increased risk for chronic disease and all-cause mortality. No matter how you slice it, the supposed short-term benefits of eating a low-carbohydrate diet simply don't translate to the same benefits in the long term. But that's okay, it shouldn't be discouraging. One of the reasons that people feel tempted to try these diets is because they're just used to eating high-fat foods and high-fat meats, and maybe they've been doing this for a long period of time. But here at Mastering Diabetes, we have a different approach. Our entire goal is to teach you just how to eat a low-fat plant-based whole food diet so that you can use it as a tool, as a mechanism to transform your health from the inside out. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then keep listening because there's a lot of people who are talking about their A1C miracle, and it's true, this method really works. And we have a wide range of programs from group coaching, private coaching, and all of them are specifically designed to help you change your life. In order to find out which option is best for you, we suggest booking a free discovery call to talk to a real human being who can see which is the best option for you. All you got to do is go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start and sign up for a discovery call and you can talk to a real human being right there. And while you're here, heck, push that cute little like button with your thumb or with your mouse, subscribe to the channel, do all that fun stuff on YouTube, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.